All right, guys, and we're live here on Twitch, YouTube, and all the other places which you can check us out. So thank you very much for joining us in. This is Nerd to Know Basis, show 64. 64 shows, congratulations. That's crazy. We're really getting up there now. We're going to do something special for our 100 shows. So this week, we're, we were going, we're not going to take a break from The Simpsons. Um, because, you know, I, although I was surprised, you guys wanted to talk about The Simpsons. Like... <laughs> Katie, you even watched like a full season where you weren't supposed to watch. <laughs> that, like, I know, yeah, because because normally either when we do the reviews, I don't get a chance to like finish the whole season, so I'll watch as much as I can. But other, you know, life and stuff gets in the way. Mm. And this week, I was like, I will be so good. I will watch the whole season. It's gonna be great. The, well, I did skip the monorail episode, but only because <gasps> I can like um what? I can almost recite oh. that one from memory at this point. Like I've seen it so many times. But, that's just that. Is there a chance the track would bend? Not in your life. Yeah, no, <laughs> but like I Wouldn't literally. Here by the devil. No, no good sir. sir. I'm on the level. The level. <laughs> Ring him off my pudding pan. Well, mm -hmm. use my pen, pen knife. knife. My good my man. Good man. <laughs> <laughs> but um, like I literally, I watched the whole season. You know, minus the monorail, I watched the whole season, and then I wasn't paying attention because it was just kind of. You know, I was watching it at night before bed and stuff, mm. and it went like two, maybe three or four episodes into season five, and I was like, "I am doing so good. When is this season over? How many episodes <laughs> do I have left?" And I was like, "Wait, hang on a minute. I'm on season five now." Oh, and that's uh, that. That began with um the Cape Fear one, wasn't it? Oh, uh, I think Cape uh, Fear is like episode three. Was the, yeah with the rakes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That that's that 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 is the best, um, the best one. They're the whole, of the whole series anyway, so... That yeah. is my, my top... Like, a Sideshow Bob episode is, is always a good thing anyway, but that is, that's like my top Sideshow Bob moment. Mm. Um, I'm going to break the fourth wall. Dara, I'm coming in on another device. Could you let me in, please? You are, you're in. That's it, he, he's in there twice. And <laughs> We've he, got two keys! <laughs> and, and, he, and, he, and it's funny, uh, he, he's, bre he's breaking the fourth wall, but it's literally facing a wall, so... <laughs> Maybe that is the fourth key and you wall. become a painting. This is <laughs> this is transcendent. Fair play. It's Truly. a key in within a key in. <laughs> um, but yeah, like so, we're we're gonna take a break from the Simpsons this week. Next week we'll go back to Simpsons when Bryn is is here because he is currently it's his birthday, so he's off watching movies. Didn't want to spend it with us, so Boo Keen. Oh. Oh, Boo Happy birthday, Bryn. <laughs> not, not Boo Keen. Boo Bryn. Or maybe not. <laughs> Definitely Boo Bryn. Maybe Boo Keen. Yeah, yeah maybe Boo Keen. <laughs> um, yeah. Welcome back. Thank you. Welcome back. Um, yeah, so this week we decided to take a bit of a, a bit of a change in format. I think the Simpsons uh, reviews are going to be bi-weekly, so we don't get through all of them, and also so we can kind of break them up a bit. Um, this week we said we wanted to talk about live action remakes. Oh, oh no, 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 no. Oh, God. I have a bad feeling about this. Well, see, I have so many a opinions. I have of anger here. <laughs> so many opinions. <laughs> well, look. Really? <laughs> well, see, look, right. I, I, I just want to say off the bat, it's unfair to judge all of them harshly. Right. Oh no, some of them are great. Some no, are just great. can we just judge the majority of them harshly? <laughs> well, what I want to say is, is like, where where do we draw the line on this? Because I was having well, a think, and I'm like, is adaptation the same as a, a live action remake, or would it be, you know, it was an anime and then it became uh, yeah a thing? Like, where do we want to draw the line? Because that's something I could see some people kind of getting into, like saying, oh, well, technically this is is a live action remake so where do we like, like we Death doing? Note isn't strictly a remake like that kind of thing like well I would oh. well I would more say well <laughs> Death Note I would say even more the Marvel movies for example mm -hmm. they're technically live action remakes of the animated series technically remake, live action remakes of comics so would we include those I think that's a bit of a stretch yeah like for think, some sake? of them some of them would follow specific Plot arcs. lines that were laid in the comics, arcs mm. that were in the comics, but like a lot of them are just kind of so reshuffled and restripped mm. that like they're nearly indistinguishable from the actual comics they're based on. Well, that's but a I fair mean, point. Like in some, yeah, in some cases, some of them are nearly. In fairness, though, like a comic book series can can be any number of of issues, and you know, say you've got a a story arc that's fifty comic books, you're not going to fit that into an hour and a half or two hours. Like, so you would have to restructure it. Yeah, yeah, and, and yeah. That... Like, Civil, Captain America: Civil War is only a bare bones 
like make of the thing it's named after like you know 100 yeah. like it's completely different it's in, in every conceivable way but i just wanted to, to to mark that off straight away because that's one thing when i was going when i was thinking about the topic i'm like well are we going to include this it's unfair to not include it but it's 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 good that we, we knocked it off so for this it's mainly going to be it existed as a thing and was remade pretty much from the ground up as very uh-huh. very similar to the thing um, we're going to include video games in this as well, right? Like video oh, games. Oh, no, no, no. Is there like an eject button on this? <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. I, I know Lisa has a list. See, minor adaptations, <laughs> things that existed then had movies made out of them. That's fair. So, like, I'd have like a lot of anime or manga or a lot of um, like kind of nerd books and nerdums and stuff that then got movies made out of them and some of them are great some of them are awful yeah so that's kind of where i was coming from rather than like here is a movie and they remade the movie so i think mine might be a bit different so question then question then if we're including manga can we also include comic books for argument's sake i would say i I would say graphic novels for for that case graphic novels yeah Yeah. and i think yeah look that's where i was kind of getting at where the source material exists and it's very, very close to it, but something happened and was lost. So it all kind of works in that sense. Um, so who who has the more opinions? Who wants to, to lead this? This this. Uh, um, about? I won't Can lead, I but some... I just want to say I want to. Sorry, Kev, you go first. Uh, no, actually, you go first because I want to start. I want to start with just something a little controversial. <laughs> okay, well, then I'm just going to say I have thought about this for a few days. I'm going to fly the flag for mixed to poor adaptations of children's books like on the good end let me stick it on the bad end i have a lot to say about the darren shan movie but yeah i'm gonna need some time before we get into that so kev you take it i like the death note adaptation on netflix i agree no <laughs> no <laughs> wrong okay definition wrong <laughs> it's not a good movie <laughs> i will say one thing in its favor and just and only one thing in its favor willem dafoe Fair. Yes. Yeah. Fair. I, I, that. That. See, See, I think when it got like I, I watched it, and I was like, "This is a bad movie," but I'm still really enjoying watching it. Mm. And it was when I kind of was like, "Oh, it's just a Final Destination movie." Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then think... it turned. I was like, "Oh no, this isn't. This isn't like the psychological back and forth that I watched fifty episodes of." <laughs> it's it's a, it's a Final Destination movie. It is it is an absolute just kind of a just gore montage. I'm like, "Oh, this is." This is great. <laughs> Again, ter- like poor acting, poor writing, poor characters. Just a fun movie, though. E- excuse you, Willem Dafoe was mocap. Willem Dafoe was great, but like, the actual... <laughs> oh, you know, but like most of the cast. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, the rest of it, no. <laughs> I well, couldn't even watch all of it. Well, Kev, you, ha- you have someone who supports you. Monster Mutt in the chat, uh, Monster Mutt 93 in the chat says, I agree with Kev. It's good as its own standalone thing if you forget about its source material. But that's that's the thing that you, is a big ask, though, and I think yeah, like, yeah. it. But it's so, it is such a kind of a different reinterpretation of its source material. It's easy to kind of separate it. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. I, look, I'll give you that. And I didn't, I didn't hate it. I think if it was, if it was kind of not coming after one of the best anime series, well, particularly the first series of all time, um, it would be an easier kind of thing to swallow than what it was. William Dafoe does save it because he is so spooky that he. It still seems like he's born to play that role, if not born to play the Joker or something like that. But yeah, okay, I, I can see. I can see your point. And it's what fair. I can say in its favor is I saw the Death Note film before I read the manga and saw the anime, and it made me want to see more. And that is not a compliment you can give to a lot of other live adaptations. Like, yeah, that's fair. I definitely think like the the problem kind of more lies in its marketing of itself as an adaptation of it, which it kind of mm. isn't. It's what if the it's it's a it's it's a more of a kind of a what if, what if the Death Note was thrown in the middle of like South California as opposed to the middle of Tokyo, which I think would have been a better approach. I think yeah, that, like I think I think it's less about kind of it, it's less about the actual plot of the movie. It's more about how it it presents itself. Yeah, like uh, if that had a, and I think they probably should have named the characters differently and went a different direction with it instead of being yeah. It's it's actually now that you say it, it's very much similar to what happened with a movie um, Nightbreed. I don't know if you guys ever seen Nightbreed. No, never uh, Nightbreed is a Clive Barker mo- Clive Barker movie um, that was marketed as a slasher film. That's not. It's kind of like a dark fairy tale 
that has slasher moments in it. And it, it was it was marketed in that sense that it, it bombed epically, but has a has it um has a cult following now a couple of years down the line. And yeah, and it's I think that's kind of what happened there. But um okay, controversial way to start things all off yeah. there, Kevin. I would say uh, on my on my side, and a live action remake that I really like is Mortal Kombat from the nineties. Oh, like the nineties one. Mm. Well, no, sorry. Yeah, I I think the whole Mortal Kombat franchise, even the TV show, isn't great, but it's not bad either. I think it's one of the best comic uh, video game movies ever made. It's a lot of fun. Uh, captures oh, the... oh, wait, I remember this. This Adam's Family guy in it, doesn't it? Yeah, uh, oh, no, Raul Julia. Again. No, sorry. He... Mortal no, Kombat. No. Is that, that's the one with the bald guy. Raul well, Julia is in Street Fighter, which is on the other spectrum, on the other side of this scale. Sorry. No, uh, Mortal Kombat. Oh, has... I know. Mortal Kombat 2. That's the one with Mother, you're alive. Too bad you will die. Yes, that's the sequel to it. <laughs> Thank se- you. Okay. Let's not talk about the sequel. But um, Mortal Kombat 1 has Christopher Lampere in it, um, has a great cast, very accurate actually to be honest with you with the source material, has a really cool Shang Tsung who was in Sabrina, they mentioned Sabrina, <laughs> they mentioned this where, no Sabrina learns karate. Um, Vaguely? Yeah, yeah, she learns karate and he, she ends up fighting him and the trophy ends up talking, it's like cheater, 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 well, cheater. Now, now so. hang on a minute, which Sabrina, are we talking about the good one or yeah. the one on Netflix? I like oh, oh, you're going to wind up Dara with that song. I like the one on Netflix, but we're talking about the, the comedy one. The comedy one in this yeah. case in the 90s. We're um, all going to be in group therapy after this with all the controversy. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Last episode of the podcast. <laughs> yeah, Monster Mutt, there, there is a, there's not only a genuine uh, uh, a live action remake of Mortal Kombat the movie, but there's a TV show and a series with the same cast in different stages. Um, but yeah, look, it, it you know, Movies get uh, video game movies get a lot of hate. I think if you're going to watch one Mortal Kombat, the original Mortal Kombat is the best place to start and it has a banging soundtrack. Tunes, absolute yeah. tunes, tunes for tunes. days, for absolute yeah. days, yeah. and not just the not just the the famous Mortal Kombat one that we all know, but like loads Mortal of them are, Kombat. yeah, that one. <laughs> but all the tracks are just class. So and the fight scenes are, are amazing. Johnny Cage even does a friendship in one. After he spoilers, he kills Scorpion and then he does an autograph and shows it to him. And it's like this is just <laughs> fantastic. Uh it's brilliant. I swear to god, like it's really good. And anyone who says there's been no good comic um what's a comic no good uh, video, video game. game movies before Protective Pikachu or Sonic, watch Ew. Mortal Kombat. So seriously, that's yeah. that's my take. Can I throw in an extra one there? Another good video game adaptation. We start off on a positive note. Go for it. I love, love, love the Ace Attorney movie. That's really good. Yeah. That's actually it, really decent. The live action version of the first four cases and they get the humor of it perfectly. Like, it's the best ad for the series ever because they somehow translate it into live action and all the humor of animation still works. They still get that, that power on the stand. I is don't this, know uh, how they did it, but it's excellent. Is this Japanese live action one? Yeah. Yeah. I think I've seen bits of it knocking around, but I've never actually seen it. It's actually a pretty good watch. They take three of the first four cases and put it into a one streamlined plot, and they mm. have no shame. They do the wigs and everything, like, and they do all the physical humor, and it's just a really compelling watch. It's absolutely very, very funny. Like, and I think a lot of the problem with these is they don't cap- capture the spirit. Mm. of the material like we talked and that's the thing like as as kind of hokey and 90s as the Mortal Kombat movie is it still captures that kind of spirit of it yeah and some yeah. of the re- and some of the remakes that we're going to be talking about remakes or adaptions that we're going to be talking about lose the actual spirit of it I, I when I was in college we had a mod we had a module called uh, adaptation and this was like I, what, what's lost in adaptation and it was all about ad- adapting was in, in the sorry not to get too into it but in the 19th century that's when they kind of started like writing out Latin text into English and they were trying to figure out how to do it. So there's two ways. There's proper adaptation where you'd kind of take the the bits out of it and then there's summation where you kind of take the general beats of it and make it up. And that's kind of what some do and that fails because the best way to do it is being as close as you can. But in some cases, um, in some cases I would say it's kind of good to make your own thing out of it, which is what we talked about with the MCU where they take the overall feel of it 
and recontextualize it into something a bit more palatable. But nine times out of ten, if you're taking a story from an anime or something like that, it's better to kind of stick with it. So uh, another another kind well, of well, funnily enough, actually, just because you wrote uh, to comment on your point there, yeah. there's a really good documentary on superhero film adaptations on Amazon Prime, and one of the points they made was that about the Sam Raimi Spider Man was that until that film came along, producers were looking at comics and going, "What can we change to make?" this into a movie yeah. and the spider-man film was the first one to go what can we change about filmmaking to, to make, make this a spider-man story yeah. and i think that is a really crucial point on how these adaptations live or die like yeah i would say that's that's a very succinct point really to kind of to really kind of sum up how it's been done and i don't think we've got there yet with anything really japanesey mm. you know like like well detective pikachu and sonic have changed that now where they've kind of changed the game yeah, and you know, I think Dave opened up the doors and being like, you know what, we can, we can make this really, really feel like it's source material without sacrificing story. So let's just say, mm. you know, uh, yeah. Go While for it. we're on the subject of um, video game adaptations that obviously got lost in translation, can we address one of my favorite ones, which is probably the elephant in the room, but mm. it's so bad that it's good. Super Mario Brothers. Oh, I was gonna, oh, oh, have you actually seen that? <laughs> oh, it's one of oh, my Bob favorites. Bob Bob yeah. That's that's that, that's a choice. Yeah. I was actually going to bring that up and say uh, before you jumped in, I was going to say, or else you end up with something like Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> so you have to you have to tell me how, why? That's a weird. I've never said anyone like stick up for it. Go on. Well, like, because when I first saw it, I was a kid. Fair. Yeah. That's so to me, it was just like, oh wow, Super Mario Brothers is a movie now, you know, and because I hadn't <laughs> like played a lot of the like I played the games as as a kid, you know, you get the the controller that you plug into your TV and it's got all the Mario games on it. Mm. Yeah, but they ne- yeah. to me they never like I never followed a cohesive story other than go to the castle. Oh no, she's not in the castle. Yeah. yeah. So it, for me, it wasn't like they've ruined the story of Super Mario. It was kind of like no oh well, to ruin. It's yeah. its own kind of thing, really. Basically. Yeah. Plus the fact that you've got Yoshi is like a velociraptor. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know? well, for anyone who hasn't seen the movie, the plot basically is uh, Koopa Kingdom basically is evolved dinosaurs who basically followed the error evolution instead of monkeys following that evolution. And but that's, it's, it's yeah. kind of it's kind of like dystopian metropolis where everyone's yeah, dressed it looks like very Blade gothic. Runner. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know, and like month, trash month, Blade Runner. <laughs> but that's what it feels like, Trash Blade Runner. Uh, in the chat, there, uh, Super Mario Brothers is the most wonderful thing that I don't understand how it happened. There's a great series. There's a great. There's a great series actually. If you guys haven't seen it, called uh, Good Bad Flicks, and um, it it kind of goes through the process of it. Um, I'll link it in the description of, of this video, and you can it, it goes through the whole production of Super Mario Brothers and why. What happened happened basically. So look for that in the oh, description. Oh, I bet that's a to trip. be fair though. Super Mario has kind of always had a, like because there's this, has anybody seen the really weird kind of late eighties, very early nineties anime of Super yes. Mario? Yeah, yeah, like that is like psychedelic. I think when it comes to Mario, I don't think you're ever gonna get anything that isn't completely like mind trippy. Like it's everything to do with Mario is psychedelic. I think it's because there's no actual kind of plot per se in the game. There's when so it, when you take it, that's it because it's like it's like two like Italian dudes in you know, like a Japanese kingdom in dungarees. They may or may not be plumbers. There's all these freaky ass creatures that can be interpreted as either like monsters, mutations, fantasy, anything. Do you know what I mean? Like I just think there's so much giant kind of mushrooms. Stuff. Yeah, basically, they can hit like, the are they all just yeah, like it? Seen... Yeah, like yeah, like I've seen like they're never. I've seen snippets of like the uh, sorry, I've seen snippets of like the super of like an old Super Mario manga that was around that was like a slapstick comedy. Oh, well, appara- yeah. apparently, That's guys, weird. there's a there's a also a high, uh, half live action, half animated Super Mario series that's full of sexual innuendos. I have. Oh, I, have I haven't seen that. this. Yeah, I haven't yeah. seen this. I have yeah. seen bits of that. That's weird. wild. That's wild. But look, what I will say is I agree. Like the Super Mario universe is very hard to nail down because of that. To be fair, they could have just eaten loads of mushrooms and got high. It could be all just the... Yeah, anyway, for that. But <laughs> they what could about... be like someone's bathroom, like fixing the plumbing high on mushrooms. Like, wow, I'm in this magical kingdom, and they're just really like in some dude's apartment, like 
fixing a pipe. Well, see, I think that's what the movie was kind of going for, right? Where they kind of ground it and then they fall in. It could have just been like, yeah, they just did a bunch of bad drugs. But compared <laughs> to Sonic, right, which has a story, Sonic's um, adaption through actually just great video on that. I will try to find it. I think it's a Midnight Edge. I'm not too sure. Um, but oh, the, yes, I saw that. Was them it Midnight Edge? And I know I'm always saying them, but um, the Irish YouTuber who does the Simpsons videos. They, Super Eye Patch Wolf. They, yes. yes. Super Eye Patch Wolf. He yeah. did a great video. They've both done very good breakdowns of Sonic recently. We keep hammering on about him because he's that good. He is that good. Well, I- we need to have him on. <laughs> Come on our podcast, please. At us. <laughs> but Wolf, what about... hear us. <laughs> Notice us, senpai. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, that was one I watched and it was fantastic. But what I will say is like, I grew up with Sonic. I actually grew up watching these shows. So I remember the, I remember being, what, four or five? And there be, and there was two Sonic TV shows on. There was the really, really dark one, which was yes! amazing. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and, I remember that. And it had the best team song ever. I had a like yeah. really cool team song. And then there was one that was more kind of cartoony. And you know, yeah. four year old yeah, Urkel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was the Urkel Sonic, yeah. But four year old yeah. me did didn't understand why some of the show was like really dark and then it was a hard cut to the rest of the show being all happy. I'm like, Are these the same show? <laughs> they realized that they weren't. The correct answer is no. Yeah, well, you know, it didn't help that they were on back to back. So like, that really didn't help things. Does anyone remember the Sonic comic book? I do. I never read it, but it's like the longest series ever, right? It's like going yeah. of like that kind of but thing. It only did recently. That got really dark at points as well. Yikes. Yeah, like suit like though I think I remember reading one where Tails ended up going into this underground mushroom kingdom and it was kinda like, Hey, we <laughs> like you and you're cool, but you can never leave. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's just like whoa! Tails <laughs> joins a cult now. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, but like I, that's a series that had, and I know like even in the games and stuff, it got very, very weird and bizarre. So it kind of like Sonic was one of those things where a constant adaptation worked against it, but also we came back around where we had the Sonic movie, and even before that with the um the latest game, Sonic what Mania, which is fantastic. Mania. So oh, it's yeah. like you know. I would say that working through this kind of birth pains almost of this transformative media is good sometimes, but well, it now, just it just takes let, it just takes a little bit of pushing and patience. I don't think we have also, patience. Let's also acknowledge the fact that they had to fix the human teeth to make the movie watchable. To be fair, if that whole movie had yeah. been with human teeth, I don't think I would have been able to watch it because that's a yeah. spooky. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. Terrifying. It's like why <laughs> does he have human teeth? It's not okay. It's not okay. The fact that like the hands were it was his, it was white hands, not gloves. Yeah, not it was me. just yeah, like that man. Was weird. It, it's just it's not okay. It's like with with cats when you had to like they rendered like proper buttholes on all the cats and they took oh. them out. And it's like why That's did the you... movie I need to see behind the scenes? Why did you do this? About. I need yeah. to know how that movie happened. I, I feel sorry. Have you seen Lindsay Ellis's thing on it yet? I haven't. Yeah. I will though. I will oh, though. Oh, it's great. It's a trip. And that's another thing, that that's another adaptation that we had where it was like a musical and became a movie and you had to keep patching the movie or as as mm. we say in like IT, hot fixing. You have to hot fix the, the the thing as it's going forward because it's held together. But imagine, well, that's because it was so rushed to get well, to the cinema. Well, here's the thing, Katie. Mm. Imagine being that poor artist who had to sit there and animate Taylor Swift's cat hole. Just paint on buttholes all day. <laughs> well, I won't I won't dwell on cats for too long, but it was completely avoidable. The problem is that the director, and even though I love the King's Speech, the director wanted them in mocap suits that they were free to move around in. Mm. So they had to be like animated in real time. Which mm. could you ever try to animate something in real time? It's I a terrible can't imagine doing that. It's a terrible strain on the animator's wrist. Yeah. <laughs> and then they get thrown under the bus. Like I honestly feel, uh, I honestly feel bad for them. Like, uh, it's just it, and you know, as much as it says in the chat, someone had CGI butthole render on their CV. Probably, probably. Yeah. Like, he, he, show I'm me gonna your, say oh no God. one's putting cats on their CV. It was, show me a portfolio of your work, and it's just yep, <laughs> no, there it is. No, no, Keith, you're wrong. <laughs> there Tom is. Hooper's putting cats on his CV. <laughs> Except you <laughs> know, it... <laughs> above Les Mis. <laughs> <laughs> Les Mis, is, Les Mis is unfortunate. I was really upset watching Les Mis, and not for the reason that you're supposed to be. I was more like, <laughs> what is this movie? Why is it killing Les Mis? Um, controversial... Les Mis. Pe- I did not know you were a musical head, Dara. 
Yeah, uh, I am. Yeah, like, this is unfortunate because it tries to stick too closely to the, mm. to no, the well, or like to the adaptation of the, for a, like in a kind of a, in a few ways. But it, it doesn't was... format itself well to being a movie. Well, look, no, uh, well, hold on. on that point, right? That works sometimes. Like, for example, I really like the Phantom of the Opera movie for some reason. Oh, it's fantastic. But it shouldn't oh, be. I don't know why God. I like it. Like, I, I've seen the stage show and it's... Have it's, you heard him sing? It's, yeah, well, that's uh, terrible. This is the point of no return. Well, see, you know, no, that was, that was the movie that made me fall in love with Jared Butler. And Fair. I've never seen him better in anything else. Well, Have you seen 300? Ah! 300 is amazing. Yeah, okay, yeah, all right, 300. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Um, but, like, watching watching that movie, I was just like, okay. And then you see the stage show and you're like, stage show is amazing. One of the best movies of all time. And then you, you will go back and watch the movie and be like, I still really like this movie. Why yeah, do I like this movie? Enjoy. Like, yeah, and I, I feel bad for picking on Jared Butler because the actual Phantom song, he does sing decently. It's just there's those points where it breaks out and it's like, oh, no. You're not a singer. Well, this he, is one of those weird well, he was things. In a, he was in a band in college. That's how he got the part. Really? Well, same with the yeah. pro, though, and name is, though. He was in a band, but it doesn't necessarily translate to well, musical singing. Well, here's one for you. Munster Mud says that, music fant- is, that movie is fantastic, and she actually prefers the soundtrack to the original because the voices are Ooh, stronger. that's yeah. brave. But it's a weird thing because The Phantom of the Opera wasn't even a musical to begin with. Like yeah. it was a book oh, by Gaston. Yeah, that's, yeah. Fair. that's fair. And then it was the Universal movie from the twenties with um Lon Chaney Senior, which that's is a, painful. That's kind of the weird, weird because, of because it's like adaptations where yeah. it eventually hit up like it hits so many adaptations. Yeah, that it's that like we're talking about whether this, or not that this musical version became the definitive original. That's mm. kind of it because yeah. it's like we're talking about adaptations of an adaptation, and it's yeah. like yeah. that's how it's kind of come along because it's not even a musical to begin with. So now it's kind of evolved from a book to a movie to a musical and then the musical was like the pinnacle so now everything's kind of branching off from that now the now, now the now the fe- now, now like the fence is just been pushed further yeah yeah completely yeah it's so weird it's it's weird but it's like I, I suppose that kind of happens whatever reaches that it's like you know cover song i suppose when someone covers mm-hmm. a song it actually ends up being the definitive kev you know this with metallica i think the metallica covers becomes the definitive version of that song yeah, yeah. That was nice. else. Well, we'll call it 50 percent of the time yeah so the one that always the, the one that always shocked me was when i found out that hendrix is all along Ooh, the watchtower yeah it was a cover Bob yes. Dylan. Yes, yes. yes Bob Dylan, I mean, like, man. I, that, that, that shook me and i went Fuck. back and listened to the, to, the, to the dylan cover and i was like oh it's really good but like it's not hendrix. Hendrix hendrix hendrix. To be honest, i feel like you know even bob dylan would be surprised to find out that Jimi hendrix yeah. would do it for Here's but one to be fair, it's the same with Adele when she did Make You Feel My Love. Everybody mm-hmm. in the mm-hmm. world thought that that was Adele, but it's actually Bob Dylan again. So what Everyone gets Bob one Dylan Bob Dylan, Dylan song and that's it. Basically, <laughs> yeah. Go for it, Katie. Natalie and Brulee are torn. Yeah. It was originally it's a, a dude. It's a cover. Is it? No, yeah. no, it was, it was a woman, but it was, oh, was, it was it? a I band. It was yeah, a yeah. No nope. way. Cover version. No way. That's weird. But I suppose <laughs> that that's what we're kind of looking at with some ways, you know, like... The, that's, and this is what I was trying to get at. The hatred of adaptation sometimes is fully justified and the fun part is coming up now in the next half an hour. But um, yeah. if, sometimes it's okay to kind of be like, you know what? It's not so bad. Oh my God, 1985 by Bowling for Soup's a cover? I did not know that. That's, changed, that's changed my world. Yeah, Whoever was in the chat no there, way. thank you for Dara's existential crisis. I did not know that. I, <laughs> no. I know he did a Who's... cover... I know they did a cover of Stacey's Mom, which is actually better oh. than Fountain of Wayne's. <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's oh, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah, so that's I hmm. I can't believe that. If that's true, that's blown my Hold mind. On. Who did the original? I don't know. I just, someone Google it. Let us know. That's insane. Um, wow. Okay, I lost I lost my tread here now. <laughs> Another weird one for that's you. So what you were weird. saying about Metallica being the definitive. So, you know the way, like, Metallica did Whiskey in the Jar, and that's, like, usually everybody's favourite version of Whiskey in the Jar? Yeah. But can they see for covering Whiskey in the Jar? Oh, yeah, it's an old trad, it's an old trad it, song. So it's a whole, yeah. It's a whole Again, thing. it's like the Phantom of the Opera where there's a thing, then it becomes another thing, then that thing gets covered or adapted, and then that becomes like the definitive cycle. Okay, apparently 1985 was an SR71 song? Yep, yep. God, I, I, damn it. I... That upsets me. That upsets me, you know, like you wouldn't believe. You wouldn't Why believe. I'm on this podcast when I, can, I, when I, have, to, I have to listen to that now. <laughs> 
Like, Don't be upset. It's still a great song. It is a great song, and I wouldn't mind the cover of Fel- the cousins of Stacey Ma. The cover of Stacey Mom is actually phenomenal, and it's just like, oh, sorry. Okay, never mind. Right. Um, <laughs> I'm upset now. Yeah. Oh, it has been a tough idea. I think our conception of reality is just, just going to be melting as this goes on. It's just been shattered. Right. Yeah. So, <laughs> it's okay. You don't have to be sorry for what you've done. Thank you for the education. I, I was not aware. <laughs> um, okay. So, here's where the fun begins. Lisa, please yeah. give us some of the terrible... The terrible... Ten pages of notes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, oh, my God. So like... The whole room is shaking. <laughs> I've kind of narrowed it down now. I've tried to be fair. I did include um, remakes or adaptations that were actually better than the original, for example. Um, I don't know how many of you guys would be into J-horror or Japanese horror movies or anything. Yeah. But I did a pa- Water. We did, we, did, we did a panel on it, Lisa. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally how I met you guys. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> that in no way escalated quickly. Um, yeah, so Dark Water and Ring like the famous Ring movies with Sadako and all that, they were yeah. actually both um, originally... Well, Ringu was a novel by Koji Suzuki and Dark Water was a short story by Koji Suzuki in a book of the an anthology of the same name, all about like horror-themed uh, nautical stories. So everything in that book, Dark Water by Koji Suzuki, was just based on uh, like horror at sea or water was involved in some way. And I actually think Ring and Dark Water are two examples of where the movie like far surpasses the original content and um, a bit like detective pikachu i think detective pikachu the movie is a thousand uh, yeah, times better than the game like, yeah the game was very oh, bad yeah the game was yeah, very no, bad which, actually, if knows I can, my anger that game. if i can side note quickly if you want a terrible like a really great terrible movie the sequel to the american ring is awful oh, in the best oh, way. Oh no! Oh no! That's no! Real. No! no that's Which sequel? So this, this, the, 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 the original the sequel. Is. Rings two. Ring two. That's what it's called. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah this, no. I think it only, it only came out like four or five years ago. That's so, rings. Yeah, that's that's rings. 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 Yeah. Rings. So basically, rings. this is where I was going with this. So call it something like... else. <laughs> like it's just confusing. <laughs> Let's call it something else. Oh it also, my god! Into a problem because it's like aliens. What do you call rings two or ring three? Like. Ring two, like, ring, ring harder. Z- 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 it's like, z- z- ring, z- ring, two, ring, ring two, ring two, furious. <laughs> I did, oh. I did not, I did not mean to derail this. I'm sorry. Ring three, <laughs> Tokyo Drift. <laughs> That's what Return I want. of the ring. <laughs> Son of <laughs> ring. <laughs> you know what? Listen, if this came out in the nineties, there would be Son of Son of Ring, and then it'd be the Bride of Ring, and it'd just keep going all the way through, like Chucky. Sorry, go yeah, on. Godzilla, Godzilla yeah. versus Ring, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, fun but, uh, fact, Ring is actually, was written by Bob Dylan, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, actually, on on that point, not on that point, but on, on, a, on, a, on that point Lisa was saying, um, I do think the actual, while the adaptation was weak, it was super important and transformative in such a way, like the yeah. first, very, it's like the, the grudge, the first grudge is actually yeah. quite good. And I think yeah. it kind of got like worse and worse as it went forward. Like that's the case. The grudges, the gr- sorry, just the grudge yep. is a continuous. Like the gr- like so there was two grudge movies originally made mm. by Takashi Shimizu. Yeah. Then they were so good. They're really low budget kind of college efforts. They were so good. They then both got remade into the original movie that people refer to as the original Japanese grudge, and oh. that had a sequel. And then, so you've got four Ring movies, and then Sam Raimi picks it up, and he takes stuff from the first four Grudge movies, which are, by this point, we've already had Ring one, or Grudge 1 and Grudge 2 remade to the original Japanese Grudge 1 Grudge 2. And then you've got Sam Raimi coming along, and he takes factors from all four of the original Japanese Grudge movies, makes them into three Grudge movies, and then there's like about seven grudge movies in total then made after the original four grudge movies. And then America comes along last year and goes, yeah, let's just remake it really badly. And well, not do anything. That story had an anticlimax of an ending. Yeah. But what I will say on that, that's very, that's very kind of part of the course with this kind of stuff. Because right, even to Sam Remy, right? Evil yeah. Dead 1 was re- oh, yeah. was made... Was re was kind of reimagined into Evil Dead Two, and then beca- yeah. kind of became its own thing. Yeah. But to, to go with the, the Japanese kind of side of things, 
the Power Rangers that we would know, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, yeah. aren't a thing. They're, they're Super Sentai series that were picked up yeah. randomly in the middle of the run and just it is spliced. A teen drama yeah. to a J action series. Exactly. <laughs> that at that point was like eight, eight or nine years old. So it just seems like in that case, it was the most genius use of editing ever. Yeah. It's a fantastic idea to be like, you know what? Let's take bits of this. And there is a fun, there's fun comparisons on YouTube where later on, like particularly in the second season of Power Rangers, they run out of bits and all this, all the Japanese stuff is spliced from two different series at the same time. And in my head now, as it's going back, I'm like, this explains so much about why that show is so weird and why it was great. Because stuff would happen and you're like, that makes no sense. And then you're like, oh no, now it makes more, way more sense. So it's going to be like the editing of the Radioactive Man movie without Millhouse. Yeah. It's worse. It's worse. There's bits where it's just like, you know, because White Ranger isn't in parts of it and they're not talking to him. And the only time he's in it is in the American, where you know, the American dub, the American bits of it. But throughout the whole rest of the show, he's just not there. And then he shows up and you're like, okay, we must have caught up with the rest yeah. of the footage. <laughs> but um, yeah, so, you know, first time I found that out, that was a revelation for me that that was what yeah. was going on. So I suppose it is one of those kind of things. Um. On- on Lisa's point, though, are you guys, have you guys all seen the American Godzilla, which is kind of similar in the way that it's yeah. like a, a remake of all of the, the, the 1990s yeah. one? Yeah. Where it's like a remake of all the other Godzillas, except yeah. also not at all. Like that yeah. kind of thing. Is it just, yeah. this, this is the Roland Emmerich one, right? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I, so wait, I, is, it, is this the one with Ferris Bueller? Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 So I remember, ah, there it is. I re- Tentopolis or whatever his name was. I remember going to see this as a kid and I loved it and I still have a soft spot for it. It's um, brilliant. Yeah, I like it. And also... It's got Hank Azaria and, oh, and Lisa and Lisa, and Lisa Simpson, who's also in it. And Bart. Like, oh no, wait, not Bart. Um, Lisa Simpson. The other, the other one who isn't any of the Simpsons. So Nancy Harry Cartwright. Peter, Hank Azaria. Yeah, it's got like half of the Simpsons in it. I, yeah. think, I think Nancy Cartwright might be in it somewhere too. She is. It has Leon in it. It does have Leon in it. Yeah, he plays the yeah. he plays the French. Uh, this, yeah. Oh, service. yeah, Leon. So this was the one that this was the Godzilla that Japan <laughs> hated so much that they wouldn't even acknowledge that he was Godzilla. Oh. No, he's called Zilla. He's, this called, he's called Zilla, and they actually responded by making a movie called Godzilla versus Zilla. Zilla, and he throws him Godzilla in. Godzilla <laughs> throws him absolutely just. Just destroys him. He throws him into the Sydney Hop- He throws him into yeah. the Sydney Opera House and fires in his nuclear breath at him. That's how much they hate it. Yeah, they hated it. <laughs> they, would, they would not God. acknowledge that he was Godzilla. No, like no. And even when they came out with the with the other one a few years ago, the Brian Cranston one, they oh. went. Apparently, Brian the Cranston. people who the Brian Cranston one apparently um, a bad one. Apparently, the the creator said yeah, it's better, but it's still not Godzilla. Oh no, the yeah. Brian Cranston one was way worse than the Nick Detopolis one from the um, what, 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 that I, one. Was, I disagree. I actually I quite liked the the Brian Cranston one actually. Oh, but this no. this is this is why. So in the in the in the the Brian Cranston one, this is why they had the Mudos instead of you know Mothra or all of the other guys because the guys who owned the rights to Godzilla wouldn't give them the rights to any of the other monsters because they just oh. hated it so much. Mm. That explains that because I thought the Mudos were crap and I'm like, well, yeah. bring back Mothra! Well, here's one. Yeah. Uh, 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 so Monster Mud says that's one brilliant way to denounce the movie and throw shade at it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but here's the thing. I actually really like this. I did, wasn't a big fan of the first Godzilla movie, the, the Brian Cantor one, um, but the sequel's great. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. the sequel of Charles Dance is amazing, and it's, it's got like the Hydra. It's got Mothra. It's getting, got like Ken Watanabe, like it's got everything. using with Godzilla, mm. like in this like nuclear sub underworld thing. Oh, it's absolutely amazing. It's pure B movie, but like in a really big budget. Oh, it's yeah, the, it's the it's, best B movie I've ever seen. As from yeah, I've mixed, so I've good. mixed feelings in the second one. I remember, remember Dara, you reviewed it on the first podcast I ever did on this channel. Oh wow, we come and full circle. If you're in it for the monster cheese, the second one's much better. But like the oh, first yeah. two movies in that series, Skull Island, are vaguely tracking realism, and it just throws that out. So I can see why people maybe didn't respond to it well. Like, which actually Kong Skull Island is a really interesting case study as far as adaptation goes. Yeah. Hmm. When you kind of track Kong back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Because <laughs> like Kong Skull Island's a real. Like, just try, when you, like, kind of go back to, like, you know, the original, what, the 20s King Kong? Yeah. 
yeah. and kind of track how how they readapt and readapt. A lot of the time, it was just kind of trying to do the same thing, but with just little different bits. And mm. now you have Skull Island just going way off the script as far as what like people know as a Kong movie, yeah. and being like, "No, nah, it's we're we're throwing it. It's 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 an analogy for for the Vietnam War." And I'm like. Well, that's, okay. that's true, and it isn't, though, because King Kong was originally drawing from a lot of the, what is it called, Doc Savage-type material for yeah. its kind of jungle stuff. So it's kind of going back to its roots, just not the roots of King Kong. It's yeah. just going back to the roots of yeah. inspired King Kong. Yeah, and I think that's because it's still kind of, like, uh, the ones that work, you know, we talk, the reason why they work is because they still capture that spirit. And yeah. it, 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 while it might be something completely different, it's still kind of keeping that... Um, that tribute almost to it, like why the second Godzilla work is because it's it has that spirit of the big kaiju movies compared to the mm-hmm. first one, which yeah. had nothing. It had yeah. Godzilla in it, but it, it was just a disaster Not movie. Really, yeah. yeah, and it, it had a it had a falsely advertised Brian Cranston. It did, it did, it did. <laughs> and Jesus, it I thought, it's, they should have utilized him more. I was really excited because, like, I remember my mom isn't crazy on big kind of blockbuster movies, mm. but she loves monster movies. So <laughs> when I got a copy of Godzilla, I'm like, oh, this is gonna be great. She's like, no, no, this is a remake. This is a big like Hollywood blockbuster remake. This is gonna be like lots of guns and action it's gonna be all style though substance this isn't the kind of Godzilla I want to see and I'm like no 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 it's got Brian Cranston in it it's gonna be fine and then we watched it and then I had to apologize to her <laughs> I literally I remember because I went to see it in the cinema with some friends and yeah. I was sitting there watching the movie and I was like it's building up Brian Cranston's gonna do something mm-hmm. and then you know the whole spoiler alert he falls off the bridge and dies within the first 20 minutes of the yeah. movie yeah and I'm yeah. sitting there and I'm like He's coming back, right? Like this isn't—he's yeah. <laughs> not dead. Like he's coming back. No, nope, that's, never, that's that's the yeah, movie. and he doesn't. <laughs> no, I like what I will say is it, it, that that annoyed more people than I think the 1999 Godzilla did because at least that delivered that it never hyped itself itself up to be anything but what it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, and at least at least it fair it failed, but it failed on its own merits. And had a really good soundtrack, so that's okay. I was just about to question, say though, the if they hadn't put. Them... Bro... Sorry, you go first, Lee. Sorry. Oh no, I was just about to say at the exact same time as Sarah. I was gonna say the nineties uh, Godzilla had such a good soundtrack with PDD and Jamiroquai. So good. Oh, yeah. Jamiroquai, yeah. yeah. So good. So yeah. good. Just. I mean, really when you think of iconic. Godzilla, do you think of Jamiroquai? Well, yeah. yeah. When you think of 1999 Godzilla, I definitely do. Roland Emmerich yeah. gets a bad rep. Roland Emmerich gets a bad rep. I'm just gonna say it. Um, what he does it, deserve it? Sometimes, but sometimes he doesn't. It's it's like um, what's your man who did Batman and Robin? Joel Schumacher. Joel Schumacher. Joel Schumacher did oh, Phantom of the Opera. We're bringing it back to Phantom, aren't we? He did Phantom of the Opera, and I would say, you know what, Joel, he did Phone Booth, which is great, and he did Phantom of oh, the Opera. Phone Booth's one of my favorite films. Fantastic. Yeah. So it's he like, did Phone Booth? He did Phone Booth, yeah. yeah and phone yeah. Booth's unreal. I've seen Phone Booth and I did not know that was him. Yeah, he yeah, was And Pathfinders as well, the original, that was him. Like, I... To be fair, I've read up on him recently and apparently he wanted to do like a really dark Batman movie and like the studio were pushing him not to do it. I'm still... It's... Don't get me wrong. They're still very much Joel Schumacher movies. But I'm starting to be a bit more forgiving the more I realise that he was put in to essentially... A no-win situation. Tipper. Yeah, it, colorful and bright as possible. It, exactly. So I, I'm a little bit more forgiving of him now than I was a few years ago. Like. Look, and Batman Forever is one of my favorite Batman movies. I think it's great oh, that that yeah. balance. So it's great. It has did that, has that did weird he do, dynamic. Did he do Batman and Robin? He did. He did, he did Batman Forever and Batman for Robin. Yeah. I thank Batman my lucky stars. Robin. I thank my lucky stars every day for Bat nipples. Bat- <laughs> 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 to be fair, you know, on that point, I would say, you know. If I was George Clooney, I would have been like, listen, can we not have the bat nipples? No, no, no you got to have the bat it's, nipples. It's <laughs> the um, bat nipples make it. <laughs> the bat credit card makes it. Oh, the bat credit card, the bat yeah. Card. Oh, I, was hoping you'd bring it up I wonder, though, oh, because like Ben Affleck put up with a lot of nonsense in his uh, Batman turns. I wonder if an actress cast as Batman, are they like in the mindset of, well, I want to keep being Batman. Should I say something? Like well, that kind of actually, thing? Well, yeah. it's I, feel like, I feel like Robert Pattinson's going to say something. Yeah, stuff. well, he has. Yeah. Robert Pattinson has. Apparently, he's just ref- he's refusing to work out for the role. He's like, no, I'm just going to stay the same. And I'm like, dude, oh. I'm like, bro, you have to. 
Batman, that's all Batman. he does. Batman is no, rich. No, 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 like no, no, He no, doesn't Batman. have any superpowers. No, let's, been... let's be fair now. Let's be fair. We knew going into this that Robert Pattinson was not going to commit to that level. Yeah, like, I would say... No. You know what, though? I think he'd be a good Batman, though, because all Batman really does, other than having, like, a perfectly sculpted body as shown by the tightness of their suits, which could be actually morphed by the suit, so they could have anything and it could be holding it in. And the CrossFit suit. advertisement that but, was in yeah. uh, Batman v uh, Superman. Yeah, yeah literally. Yeah. All they need, all Batman needs is a chin and a broody, husky voice. That is all. The, yeah, the Robert suit Pattinson does the rest. Is. The suit does the rest. Mm. That's my point. All Robert Pattinson is is a husky voice and like a stubbly chin. Is what I actually, believe it or not, when I saw him in Lighthouse in February, uh, the movie with William Defoe, it literally was like, I was watching it going, he could actually be Batman because I just found out about it at the same oh, time. Oh, I think it's a good Batman, like, yeah. yeah. But the, the, <laughs> whole, gonna work. the whole thing about Batman as well is that he's completely devoid of all emotion and facial expression. And that's Robert oh. Pattinson. Yeah. It's not Michael Completely, Keaton. Yeah. <laughs> See, I would say Michael Keaton is my favourite Batman because he... Yeah. Like, there's a bit in Batman and Batman Returns where he's gone along and the penguins are firing rockets at him. And he looks back and he's like, Shit, I could have been killed. And he's just, he's just, <laughs> and it's just it's really subtle and you're like, Man, this guy's just Batman, you know, and he gets that kind of that inner conflict really well, you know. Um but There's look, only one Batman and it's Adam Wee, okay? I've Adam said. Adam Wee. Oh Wee. yeah, yeah. Oh, Adam Wee. Batman of all time. Throw that grenade <laughs> off of here and avoid the nuns. Yes. But what I will say is you know I'm gonna I'm gonna sit here and stand on Kevin Klein. <laughs> Not Kevin Klein. What? <laughs> Kevin Klein. Yeah, what's his name? Kevin Conroy. Conroy. Yeah. Not Kevin Conroy. Oh, Kevin, Although... Con- Kevin Conroy is the OG Batman. Yeah. Well, yeah. My... He's like, you got to measure up. It's the same with Mark Hamill with the Joker. You got to measure every Batman against Kevin Conroy. Yeah, yeah. I think that's fair. Um, actually, on some more Batman news, it looks like there's going to be a remake of Arkham City and Arkham Asylum. Oh. Going to reboot that series. Oh. Oh. So that's what's going to happen. Um, hmm. So, yeah, we're already in this process of, you know, reimagining and stuff like that. Um, we have to mention this in the last 50 minutes we have. Guys, Disney live-action remakes. Where do we stand? Oh, these are my opinions. <laughs> <laughs> Disney live-action remakes. Where do we stand? And Keen is possessed by Pazuzu because he hates I'm it so much. I'm hitting my head off the thing. <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, um, you know what, Keen, you go first. I've got too many. So I, too many I bought Disney, I basically bought a subscription to Disney Plus when it you know, when it was coming out. And you you know, you guys know, you heard me harping on about it for ages and ages and ages. And one of the things that I decided I was going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to watch, you know, all the remakes or at least as many of them as I can. And so far, out of all of them, I have found two that were bearable. Bearable. Can I guess? Can, bearable. Can I guess them? Let me, let, yeah. me, let me guess. Cinderella? No. Ooh. Okay. Jungle Book? Oh, actually, okay, three. Jungle Book, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, well, what are the ones that are bearable? So, The New Lady and the Tramp. Okay. Did not that was a remake. Really? That, that's I didn't know only, that was a thing. Yeah, it, was, it went straight to Disney+, Plus, and that's yeah. only because with Lady and the Tramp, there was so little story to begin with that it was hard to get it wrong. Also, it's Doggos. Like. And, yeah, it's, and it's, it's Doggos. Stuff. And yeah. also, they have, uh, is it Sam Elliott as Trusty, which is just... Oh, perfect yeah, casting, I that just absolutely perfect casting. The only issue I had with that was they changed the gender of uh, Jock. Really? Oh. But they, but they put one of my favorite female Scottish actresses as the voice, so I'm kind of letting that slide. Fair. Um, Who? Uh, yeah. You know, I uh, just set us up like that. Well, I can't remember her name, but she was in extras. Okay. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. She's the one. So she's she's in it, which is she, like, and that movie is just it's cute, it's to the point. You know, it doesn't stray from the original, which is great. Um, and it just, it gets the job done and the, the dogs are adorable. Um, the other one I found manageable was Aladdin. And that's only because Will Smith absolutely killed it as the genie. I'm, I'm going to say Kev has thoughts on Aladdin, just based on the amount of times it's come up while we've worked together in the shop. God, like, because I went into Aladdin expecting an unmitigated disaster. Yeah, me too. No, yeah, me too. I, I think, and I, I, think, like, I came away surprised at how much I enjoyed it, but yeah. that's with an asterisk. But go, yeah, oh but, no, completely. But going in with that level of, like, low bar expectation, Yeah. you know, it, that in, in, in and of itself kind of shows you how poor 
it was, you know. Well, see, here's here's the thing as well, right? Will Smith is a fantastic actor, but nobody wanted him to play the genie. Everybody mm. was against it. And he knew that going into it, that everybody was against it. Because, like, even when they released kind of teasers and stuff, it was just getting horrible, horrible feedback. Oh, and that first he, trailer drop, yeah. He sold it. Like, that that scene where he does, you've never had a friend like me. I could watch that on a loop. I don't need to see the rest of the movie. I just, like, I liked him when he was being Will Smith. Yeah. There's, like, bits where he's kind of, like, rapping. He's kind of, he's kind of vamping. And, the, like, yeah. when he's being Will Smith... Absolutely, I can get on board with this. And he's kind of wingman, wingman in Aladdin. That was cool. But after about five minutes, he'd have to go into a, into a Robin Williams bit because that was mandated. And then that just dropped me. Right. Well, see, yeah, he, just, he had. This he is, isn't Robin Williams. Well, but this is it because Robin Williams was such an iconic. Mm. Like, and like that was... was all him. Like that's because yeah. that's all pretty much improv in that original movie. Yeah, mm. and it so, was like so... that. It's 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 all Robin Williams, so like it, you can't separate that. Exactly, but it was it was so iconic that everybody went, "He's never gonna live up to that." Yeah, so I think like even trying to emulate it was a failure. I think that they needed to let Will Smith be his own genie. But yeah, they, they just couldn't. Because um, when he was his own genie, he excelled. But well, yeah. most of most of what uh, chimes in there. Uh, I agree with Katie. Aladdin is a good attempt, but not as whimsical as the original. I think that's a fair summation yeah. of the movie one, one of the things that i thought kind of and this is coming from me like i'm an uber feminist but one of the things that i thought actually brought it down a notch was when they tried to do the whole uber fe- feminism thing with jasmine mm. it really felt cheap it, yeah it, it felt like lip service at that point it was like we're putting this in here because we have to well, there's, well, well i can sort of i don't like it but i can see where disney's coming from because their brand is built on princesses and but princesses, like by virtue of being princesses, it's kind of hard to kind of. I still, like, I still think been... it should have just left well enough alone, though. Yeah, they've like, been doing a great this... character to begin with. Well, look... They've been doing this for a while with Disney movies, like with Frozen. You know, they had the whole sister power. Yeah. With Maleficent, it was true love's kiss. It turned out to be like again girl power. Mm-hmm. And so they've been pushing this for a while. Well, here's now. the thing, Katie. This... On, on that point, yeah. right? I like Frozen. <clears throat> I loved Maleficent too. The movie that. Nothing happened, but I had a great time. <laughs> literally, it's the most pointless movie ever made. Like, literally, nothing happens. No, like, it's it's great, though. I loved it. This is the <sighs> seventh time you've brought up Maleficent. Maleficent is amazing. On the DVD. It's such a good movie. Like right? Father Jack with the thumbs up. <laughs> it's such a good movie, right? <laughs> I How... liked it, so I'm in it. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing, right? The, what really bugged me, and the movie that I just can't cope with, right? It just broke me on this whole thing. Beauty and the Beast. And you're one from... Do you hear that silence? Emma Watson? Yeah, that one. The hot one from Harry yeah. Potter. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you mispronounced Be trick on Malfoy. Yeah. Be careful, she was a child when that started. <laughs> no, yeah, but that's why you don't watch those movies. Oh, you know, you watch them as the, from the fifth one or whatever. Anyway. Oh, whoa. From the eighth. Skip from the eighth one. You eighth one. Sorry, I don't know. Whatever. I don't know the series. I just know the one that I like. Um, the one that ha- the one that has the the cool animation that that's the one I like. Um, so that's the seventh one. Yeah, seventh there we go. One, there yeah. we go. I I'm not a Harry Potter fan. This seventh is why. one, part one. See, this is what happens to you yeah. show Harry Potter people. I don't know, guys. Okay, I watched them once, and that was about it. <laughs> and all, the, and they only became bearable near the end when you know your woman Emma was, Watson became of of, of age. age. <laughs> right. So <laughs> what I will say is, one the woman can sing. She cannot sing no. to save her life, right? And t- like, she, she terrible can, auto she can, she can barely act. And it's just like, what is going on here? This is so... And then they, then they shoehorn the feminism thing. I'm like, listen. Why is this happening? What is going on? You're hot, but you're not that hot. And I'm upset now. So I'm like, why is this <laughs> like, here? I'm, I'm, <laughs> all for, I'm, crying. I'm, just, I'm all for putting feminist messages into things. Like, the more the merrier, but time and place. Yeah, yeah. like, yeah, you know, I suppose, like, like, to be honest, it, well, Alan, like, just, just, just to finish. If you out of that whole Zara, it's like, how do you take Beauty and the Beast and make it modern? Without, because, like, no, I mean, well, we have nostalgia no. for Disney properties. Yeah, well, it's... Then in live action, you're very aware of the fact that it's a st- like the love or, the love interest locks her in a castle. Well, I just, well, look, I just want to finish. I just want to finish this half on that, right? Mm. 
I think Beauty and the Beast. Uh, right, your funeral. I no, I just want to. Just, I think Beauty and the Beast has a very strong feminist message to it, anyway, and it has a very mm. empowering message, okay. anyway. Because think about it, right? She, it isn't your stereotypical thing. He, she doesn't change for him. He changes for her, and she's, she, mm. you know, everything about it is, you know, on her terms. Like, yeah, she's locked in a castle, but you know, it is what it is. He's a beast, right? He's, no, he's, 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 he's literally, he's literally. You're enabling him, Dara. You're enabling his masculine behavior. He's, he's a beast. Like, he's a, you know, he's not a good guy, and he's shown that he's a bit of a doucher. So he actually comes around <laughs> it, and he becomes a pretty okay dude. So I think it was a fine message as it was, you know. Yeah. But the difference was, your one could sing, and your one could act as a drawing, and Harry <laughs> Potter lady can do neither of those things in real life. So I'm like, what's going on? Why is this existing? Yeah. Sorry. Dara, you've got a really good point there. I think what Disney doesn't get is that it feels the need to apologize for certain things about its films, but women and girls already quite like the female characters there. They like Belle, they like Ariel, mm. they like Jasmine, like, and when you add in these things on top of it, it feels like they're ashamed of the things that we grew up with and that immediately Mm. is disconnect like am i wrong here could like is anyone else like kind of it feels like they're trying they're outwardly being like look look we're 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 fixing it we're fixing it yeah we're fixing it now we're fixing it it. we like it already don't fix it actually (laughs) writing like inspiring messaging into the actual piece yeah i'm gonna say something very controversial Oh, on this show. show. They want. I feel like at this point with Disney, because they've got like the huge budgets and the technology and and all of this kind of stuff, it's gotten to the point where they're saying, "Who can we get?" Yeah. So with with the lion, like the new Lion King, and everybody knows how I feel about the new Lion King, but they had again anyway. They had an all star cast. Hmm. Like they had the biggest names that they can get right now, and every single one of them phoned it in. Yeah, that's true. I would agree. I would agree. Um, it, and on the production side too, it's the least John Favreau re John Favreau film I've ever seen. Yeah, and he was doing so well. I'm just gonna put a pin in it there, guys. If you're listening to this on Phoenix FM, we're gonna take a break. If you're not, um, we're just gonna keep continuing. So we'll talk to you next week here on Phoenix FM, and we continue on some backstage uh, stuff there for anyone watching the stream. Um, yeah, look, I would agree. It's a, it's kind of a case where. John Favreau has always have innovative takes on properties. And this was the first time, really, I think, because these Disney remakes are so walled in and they're so by the books to appeal to as many demographics as they can, it doesn't give you room to play. It doesn't give you that room mm-hmm. to kind of carry it. So you're left Particularly much... with, like, one of their biggest IPs. Well, look, like, well, there, yeah. well, 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 what I mean so is... Much well, what I mean is, right, what I mean is, right, like, you know, let's take Iron Man, for example. John Favreau took that in a completely different direction and by doing so reinvented the character, literally made the biggest movies probably of all time as a result. Mm. And when you're watching The Lion King, it's like, I want to watch the animated one because it's better. It's better. It's better, you know, and it's like, it's not because we grew up with it, it's because there's nothing, and look at me wrong, I actually kind of enjoyed the, the live action remake, but I was like, one, it's not live action because they're not real Fucking yeah, they're yeah. not real lions. They're not real all. lions, yeah. It's CG. Like it's CG. So, what, is a CG remake? It's like, you just took one art form and replaced it with another. So this seems yeah. pointless. Which could be interesting. Live action. It yeah. spray out of the blocks of what was already there anyway. Yeah, but that's I mean, it, you know? even with even with the new Lady and the Tramp, some of it's CG, like, obviously when the, the lips are moving and stuff, but a lot of it is dogs, like actual dogs. <laughs> right. Which So you can say it's live action. Yeah, and look, you know, the real, I, the... that's fair enough. That's fair enough, you know. And I, I, it, it's kind of, it's there was a good, there was a good quote there from people who were criticizing George Lucas, saying, you know, if uh, special effects are great, but it needs to service the story. Yeah. And I, I would say, you know, remakes are great when it serves the story, when it there's a point to it. And you know, Lisa brought up a few from Japan that obviously would not necessitate in remake to reach a wider audience because some people, my parents, for example, will not watch anime. No matter what right. happens, they will not do it. They also won't watch Japanese movies, no matter oh. what happens. So, you know, that's to reach an audience like that, where it's kind of like, they just won't do it, you know? And it's like, I want to watch it with Western actors, which is fair enough, you know? Um, and, and that kind of makes sense. But just to remake something that was already an established huge IP, 
just to remake it, it seems because really late. Yeah, it seems really late. That feels there's a what's happening now, like with everything across yeah. the board. Yeah. Nothing is like, and it's the same across all mediums. It's like, is anybody kind of making or creating any original stories that haven't been remade? Like, that's yeah. what's kind of happening with the cinemas. And Netflix, everything's kind of being remade. And everything's kind of a photocopy of a photocopy of a photocopy of a photocopy. And that extends to the creative team on these films as well. Like, in these remakes we're complaining about, you have the likes of Kenneth Branagh, Tim Burton, uh, Guy Ritchie, uh, John Favreau twice. And I would would honestly like to do an experiment to show them to a neutral audience and say, who do you think directed that? And I have a feeling, maybe apart from a Tim Burton Dumbo, you couldn't Dude. really guess. Yeah. And that's a well, real shame. Well, you just hurt Ke- me with Dumbo, man. You just hurt me so <laughs> Well, with Kenneth Branagh, you could because of the the Dutch angles. He loves them. It's just, oh, that's a good point. Yeah, that's, lo- well, I I think like Cinderella feels like a real road test yeah. of so a remake. Though. Cinderella wasn't bad. You know, and your one could at least act and sing. So it was mm-hmm. all good. Um, but what I will say is, you know, uh, uh, there was, uh, for example... Going back to 1994 when they really kind of started this with um, the the video game live actions. The Street mm-hmm. Fighter one has, you know, it just was pump, pumped out by committee. But the anime, Street Fighter 2, it feels a lot more like it. So that's still possible to get your adaptation once it follows, once it has passion, has a story to tell. And I think the Disney live action remakes aren't there yet. But Magnif- uh, Maleficent, for example, Maleficent 2... While it has no story and has no and has no reason for existing, it's, it's brilliant because it doesn't try to be anything <laughs> that it isn't. It knows what it is, yeah. and I loved it. And go see Can it. Can I stand up for it. one Disney remake? No, I oh, know you. <laughs> go on. No, go on. No, go on, go on, go on, go on. Uh, Christopher Robin. I know oh. it's not. A oh, that was remake, good. Yeah. That was good. That felt was like a movie cool. by aging up that character. It felt like it was saying something about yeah. Winnie the Pooh and that it yeah. loved it. And see, that, I've watched it. it a few times and I enjoy it every single time. But see, that's what yeah. I mean. That's what I mean. It's, it's that kind of, it's it's telling its own story. And it's, it's yeah, not yeah. just, it's not like they made a CGI uh, Winnie the Pooh just to have something no. on Disney+. Plus. In fact, I love the fact they look like teddy bears. I think actually, Kev, you put me onto that, which is like they, all of the Winnie the Pooh characters look like children's teddy bears with the eyes and it's everything. The so only wonderful. Yeah. The like, only odd. thing about it, that I would that I would say is like a tick against it is Winnie the Pooh's unblinking eyes. Because mm. all the other characters blink, but he Winnie knows, doesn't. He knows he's, all the he's, yeah. <laughs> he's just he's just got these dead little beady eyes. He's, <laughs> he's, just, he's a teddy bear. Yeah, he's he's adorable. If my teddy bear started blinking, I'd freak out. <laughs> but all the other, I mean, Eeyore and Tigger and Piglet, they all blink. Well, here's the thinking: if if the, if the teddy bear blinked and I had like human eyelids, I'd freak out. But if I had like teddy bear eyelids, I'd be okay with it. Yeah, yeah, like Sonic, you know, like the original Sonic. Exactly. Yeah. Actually, but look, teddy it, bear grew teeth. <laughs> human teeth. <laughs> well, look, there are. There, I I would say, look, and we're never going to reach consensus with everybody because I think everyone has their own kind of things. I'm still shocked that someone defended the the Death Note remake. So that's incredible. Um, yeah. but, well, the Death Note remake is a remake as well because there was the original Japanese movies of Death Note that were made years ago, true. featuring the Shuya from uh, Battle Royale. That's true. Oh, that's yeah. very true. Yeah. But um, so, I, I would remake say, within a remake. I would say I would say context is king, and once it has a good story to tell or does something unique, I'm not too uh, too opposed to it. But um, have you got any ones that we that we missed, guys, based on either one of your lists, or have you got anything no, to round it up? Not, like the one I the one I have the one I cannot wait for is going to be the Hercules one, which they have announced. <sighs> but like it's it just it's just been greenlit, and I think it's the Russos are producers, but that's literally all. I don't know. I'm, I cannot best wait. Best At best, I'm hoping this is a train wreck. <laughs> Look, the the actual animated movie, I love it, and I love the TV the TV show. I absolutely adore. Um, it's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's a bad movie. <laughs> Critically, yeah, it's, it's a it's bad a movie. Horror movie. But I love it, and oh, it's, it's amazing. But it's like it's a bad movie. So I am just thinking. They're probably going to have to rejig that a lot to make that work. Because that movie yeah, does like, not work. There's so many just un- incohesive parts to that movie. That how are they going to like make this in any modern film? 
I have no I, I idea. Just, I just don't. I, know. Like, I'm like, worried about who, who they're going to cast as Phil. No matter who it is, I'm worried about. It has to be Danny DeVito. CGI legs. It needs to be Danny DeVito. Doesn't matter. Like if they get anyone else, it's just like, a travesty. Man, a photo well, they said that about Detective Danny Pikachu. DeVito stayed here. They said that about oh, Will Smith. <laughs> But look, it would have worked with De- Detective Pikachu, but Ryan Reynolds made it like a Deadpool yeah. Pikachu. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Fine. Pikachu. Yeah. Exactly. Um, guys, uh, uh, Katie and Lisa, have you got any others on your list that you wanted to touch on before we wrap it up? Um, not lo- uh, mm, 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 remakes. Uh, none. Of, uh, there's too many. Like, there's so much stuff. Do a pick quick, your favorite. Pick, pick your favorite. Go for it. <laughs> My favorite what though? The favorite thing to hate or the favorite thing that's been done so well? Everybody likes everybody. Everybody likes negativity. Give us give us your yeah. top um, eight. I think the Hobbit movies were appalling. Oh yeah. lord! Yeah. Oh lord! Yeah. Oh, how do we forget? <laughs> Terrible. I think they were appalling. Terrible I think movie. Harry Potter films three to eight were appalling. Um, three to eight. Oh. Three to eight. We're gonna yeah. have fights. One and two were great. They got it exactly right, but from but the eight. acting was terrible in the first one. I know you can. That's because they're children, and you kill. can see them acting. But it, 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 I'm a what? I'm a what? <laughs> like, but the thing is, like, with regards to how close they were to the books and the tone, and they had the same director for the first two movies, so they had a sense of cohesion whereas they changed director for literally every movie after that they even changed Dumbledore's so well they had to change of, Dumbledore I know I know but I'm dead. Dead. he's dead <laughs> a wizard Harry, did you put your name in the goblet of fire he asked calmly we said this before yeah. he's 86 years old and, and he's, he's dead, dead. <laughs> <laughs> the kids want to see the original Dumbledore <laughs> <laughs> to any means like cadaver yeah, cat. bring his corpse in put him in a robe is that what you want <laughs> that's pretty much Dumbledore let's face it though no, everything from 3 to 8 was just appalling I would agree so 6 to 8 but I honestly wish they'd kept drafting in a new director because I feel like when I like David uh, what's his name the director of the later ones David Mayer oh god uh, someone in the chat tell me, but I I liked his take on the Order of the Phoenix, and I liked his take on the ooh, first Fantastic Beasts. But ooh, it's a ooh, shame ooh, no, that no. I didn't want that to be like the consistent tone for all of them. Well, I think Fantastic Beasts are awful. By the way, I won't even. Oh watch. yeah, they're terrible. I watched, the, I watched the first one, and that was enough for me. I will now. So, yeah, I, no, I've seen no. them both, and they're what? No. not even acknowledging them. Crimes Grindelwald. Crimes Grindelwald. Crimes Grindelwald. No. Crimes Crimes Grindelwald. Crimes Grindelwald can die in a fire. Can I just say, <laughs> Crimes of Grindelwald was Stevie's first Harry Potter thing oh, ever. Oh no, Can that's I... a poor Stevie choice. Can... Hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We are in the chat. David Yates was the director. Thanks, Monty. Thank you, yeah, David Yates. Yates. Thank and, you. Uh, yeah. and she agrees that Chamber of Secrets is our favourite Harry Potter movie. Yeah. Can I just it's... Can I just say, Crimes of Grindelwald, didn't hate it, had no attachment, I had a good time. You that's because you're not emotionally invested. No, no, so no. Was, I laughed my ass off. It was the, hilarious. It was a story. It was <laughs> a terribly plotted contradictory movie. backstory. You no, know, for me, Crimes of Grindelwald was none of the characters were fleshed out enough for me to feel a connection to them. And so yeah. when stuff started happening to them, I honestly didn't care. See, the thing about it is, the A plot was a love triangle where no, none of them actually cared about what the love triangle See, was. The, the, the reason why, did we? The reason and why so I, the B plot was the name of the movie. <laughs> the reason why I had more kind of like enjoyment with the spin-offs is because Harry wasn't there. An ending with Harry's not in it. Oh, <gasps> Danny Rod! It's the Harry from the Harry Potter series. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I'm just like, oh God, you know, I just kind of enjoy it. It's why I like the, 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 the play that was a book for some reason. Mm. Oh, um, the, the Cursed Child yeah, is cool. Yeah, I like that. That was fun. Yeah, I, I really yeah. Yeah. It's great. It, yeah. it, no, I really it's enjoyed it. It's silly. But it's really enjoyable. I think I'm that, sorry, but that should have been a movie. Sorry, go. On. Daniel Radcliffe is my happy place. Like Fair. him as a person. Like Fair. forget about being an actor. As a person, he is just so lovable and so endearing. I mean, they did photo shoots with when they finished Harry Potter. They did photo shoots with the three main. You know, and you've got Emma Watson in her dress and she's flowy and elegant, and you've got Rupert Grint playing his guitar, and then you've got Daniel Radcliffe in a bathrobe. Holding a tree that's on fire. <laughs> like I guess, is... I'm thinking he just came from Swiss Army, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Though no, Daniel Radcliffe can do no wrong. <laughs> yeah, my favorite yeah. was always the uh, the story of like when they cast the three of them 
first back when they were children. And mm. he's in and the tub. Had... <laughs> no, oh, and they all had to like Professor write... McGonagall. They all had to like write briefs on what they thought their characters oh, were. Oh yeah. Apparently, Emma yeah. Watson did write like a three-page brief on it. She wrote Harry more. Kind of half. What? More, yeah. Emma Watson Harry wrote more. Harry kind of half-assed it. And uh, yeah, and Rupert Grid just forgot. <laughs> yeah, no, that was the director Perfect. asked them that for the third movie. And he was yeah. like, okay, explore your character, guys. And it's like, they actually did inadvertently. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. And then Tom Felton just awkwardly hugged Lisa. And she got her <laughs> in her dad in the dad's hair. <laughs> I squeezed his stomach muscle. <laughs> it squeezed me back. I'm going to be... <laughs> squeezed me back. I'm going to be controversial again, and I'm going to say the movies seven and eight were better than the book. I don't remember the book well enough to judge. I, mm. uh, after I read the second book, I threw it behind a radiator and picked up Lord of the Rings, so that's where it stopped for me. <laughs> no, that's, that's a, not a joke. That's what happened. Just that, that's, that's, that's what fire happened. Hazard, <laughs> well, I was in school, and I was a child, so go back and tell Because <laughs> he had the books on a little, on a little um, trolley. And they're like, oh, read Harry Potter. And then I was like, oh, Lord yeah. of the Rings, let's read this. So, yeah, Fire Hazard, Behind the Radiator. It's still, probably still there because they don't move any of those schools. <laughs> but uh, that, that's where I fell off the Harry Potter bandwagon. Oh, I'm yeah. still going to stand up for Fantastic Beasts 1, though. It's I liked it as like a slice of life film that didn't have to be a bloody year long like all the other Harry Potter films. I, I was just r- really disappointed when all that stuff, that lore stuff creeped back in in the second one. See, I like the lore. The lore for me is like what it's all about. And can I say, it's not that I don't like Harry Potter. I just don't like Harry Potter. I like the world. <laughs> and the world's great and the lore's the Harry cool. from the Harry Potter is where you have the issue. Yeah, literally. <laughs> <A> Harry Potter. <laughs> all I will say about Fantastic Beasts is that the beasts weren't, they weren't even secondary. They were like way down the line. Jesus there was somewhere, somewhere, Look, somewhere over, we could have got Quidditch through the ages. <laughs> which very, I would have enjoyed, honestly. There's very, oh, yeah. there's very few beasts in this be- beast movie. <laughs> and the beasts are the same. Yeah, that's not the that's beast true. from Fantastic Beasts. <laughs> that's beast. not the Kane from Citizen the Kane. <laughs> there was no Kane point. in Citizen Kane. <laughs> Um, actually, what I, I I do want to uh, round this off by saying some good adaptations, which are really good, like oh. some, some so, to be positive. Anything Neil Gaiman? So uh, Coraline uh, is yeah, yeah, yeah. Coraline, one of the best adaptations. Coral- oh, oh, oh. Coraline is phenomenal. The cast announcement today. That yes, went I did, yeah. and it's so good. They're Sorry, doing a, an audio play, I think, version of uh, Sandman. Sandman. Yeah. Do you have the cast that's in front of you? I do. My I don't, phone over there. I don't have it. In fr- I don't have it in front of me, but it is like a who's who of who you want. It's like I literally couldn't have picked this better myself. Um, out of a dream category, he managed to get everyone who you'd want. Um, so when Keen comes back, he will list it out. He's frozen in time though. Okay, here we are. Here we go. Um, okay. So- so it's James McAvoy as Morpheus. His surprise, he was also the main character in the audio version of uh, Neverwhere. There is Michael Sheen as Lucifer. Ooh. Uh, and the circus as the Raven. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, Bebe North, uh, Lilith from Frasier as uh, the uh, Siamese cat. Uh, Taron Egerton from those uh, Kingsman films as Constantine. And the Dark Crystal. Yeah. So, uh, Kat Dennings from, like, oh, kind of Two Broke Girl Thor and all that as Death. Mm. Uh, Riz Ahmed, you know, the bad guy in Venom, Rogue One, all that kind of stuff as uh, the Corinthian. And there's loads of other, like, known names in, like, the supporting cast, like Reginald D. Hunter's in there, Arthur Darvel from Doctor Who as William Shakespeare. Uh, let's see, Joanna Lumley's in there. Like, Ooh. it's just find the image, and Neil Gaiman is narrating it. So it's excellent, oh, fantastic. Like, oh, yeah. and uh, I can't remember what she's in at the moment, but Samantha Morton is a uh, is a uh, urine Blackwell. So like, it's a top notch class from top to bottom. Like, and I say, if anyone's upset about like their adaptations, if you go for a Neil Gaiman property, you're probably going to have a good time. Yeah. And that's if you're a, looking yeah. for something in the in time, there's loads of really good audio plays. There's other books. Neverwhere has James Marvel, Sophie, really more really well. Remember any 
of his ones, like on audio forms, are usually class. Like yeah. oh, and Good Omens as well on Amazon Prime, obviously. Like oh, Good Omens. God, yeah, I kind of forget about that. <laughs> yeah, Good Omens. Got, Good Omens was a revelation for me. So um, really enjoyed it. Ah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good American one. Gods. American Gods is very good too. Um, oh, I've got Stardust. You. Anyone else for Stardust? Oh, actually, Stardust. Yeah. Actually, can I just say? Can I just say one thing as well? Um, where, where the whole process of sometimes the adaptation being better or worse depending on where you go. Philip K. Dick books. That's a that's a trouble. That's oh. a crapshoot in and of itself. Sometimes you get Blade Runner. Sometimes you get Paycheck. <laughs> you know, it is what it is. Um, but yeah. Yeah. So it is what it is. On that, the man in the high castle on Amazon Prime is pretty good too. It's not bad. It's not bad. Yeah. Um, but I, yeah. I wouldn't watch four seasons of it, but it's good. No, I definitely would not. But I think this is or a topic Wolfenstein. that. Or Wolfenstein. <laughs> yeah, which is phenomenal. Um, what I would say, I maybe we can return to this, guys. If you like this and you want to get involved, nerdtownmedia gmail dot com or leave comments. In yeah, the, let us know below. if you want to do Simpsons or the this next week. So we, we we can do more, or we can you know tag on and do more of these adaptation shows. But we have gone uh, in about an hour and an hour and change, so I uh, will call it there, guys. Before we go, we actually have stuff to plug. So um, let's go with Katie. You first. Uh, so I have a new show coming out this week. It's called Doing It for the Exposure. And it's all about highlighting, uh, you know, struggling, hardworking artists who have been affected by the lockdown recently, but also just spend most of their time trying to get their names out there. Very cool. And that's going to drop on tomorrow, uh, Thursday. It's going tomorrow to drop, lunchtime. It's going, to, it's going to drop on Thursday. So go over yeah. to our feed and you'll be able to find it there. Keen, what would you like to plug, sir? Yeah, uh, the next episode of The Game is dropping this Friday. It will have secondary school kids, uh, Ushin and Fionn Power on it, talking about board games. Mm. And uh, my good friend and cosplayer, Ushin Wallace, talking about what kind of games you can play on the internet, on Zoom and all that kind of stuff. That'll be dropping this Friday, and we might even have a special extra episode dropping next week. So keep uh, messaging and commenting if you want to pop on the show. And uh, thanks very much for the response so far. Very cool. Lisa? Yeah, so episode nine of Straight Outta Canto, uh, your number one spot for nerd culture, nightmares, nostalgia, and more, is live, well, not live, it's up on the Nerd to Know Media page on YouTube, not YouTube, on iTunes, SoundCloud, Spotify, and episode 10 will be out in two weeks if you are interested, and it's going to be a Junji Ito special, so if you have anything oh. about Junji Ito you would like <laughs> to get on board with, let me know, it's going to be an hour dedicated to him. Oh, but episode Lord. 9 is out now. That's going to be good. That horror I'm, Pokemon. I'm already yeah. in. That's going to yeah, be good. Great. Come on. Kev, anything like plugs, sir? Uh, not yet. However, keep your eyes peeled on the horizon. Uh, start of June, there may be something dropping on the channel. Very cool. Uh, and yeah, guys. This has grown a lot. So uh, yeah, the best way to keep up to date is by following us on social media or Nerdthno Media YouTube, Nerdthno Media on Twitch, and of course, Nerdthno Media, com, where everything drops there first so we'll be back same time next week guys see you later join us at nerd to know media.com 